If it's such a secondary issue, well then why do you do it? If it's such a secondary non-essential issue, well then why do you defend it? The question to people who subscribe to Christians having a demon, to those that are involved in the deliverance ministries, my question to you who will say that it shouldn't be that big of an issue because it is a secondary, non-essential issue, an issue not regarding salvation. Well, my question is, if it's so secondary and so non-essential, why do you do it? Why do you promote it? Why are you known by it? Why are there people that literally have the name, the title, Demon Slayers, if it's a secondary issue? Why do you build your platform off of it Is it if it's a secondary issue? Why would you even go through great lengths to defend and even to argue against someone if it's a secondary, non-essential issue? The fact of the matter is, it is an essential issue. It is not secondary. There's nothing in the Bible that is secondary. I understand what you mean by it doesn't, in comparison to, the, to salvation, doesn't rank as high, but we don't want to minimize it or relegate it to some sort of second rung of the Bible. The Bible tells us in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that all scripture is inspired. All of it, God breathed and profitable for teaching. Every last passage is profitable for teaching, for reproof, that is, even when you think something is non-essential, something is secondary, doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, it absolutely does. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and for correction, that's why we bring these things up, because when someone says that something is and the Bible says it's not, well, then don't you turn around and say, because you cannot find scriptures, because you cannot find a passage to make your point, then say it's secondary. The issue is the reason why it's not secondary. One, it relates to the health and well-being of the believer, but then two, it deals with the character and the mindset of the person who is exposing or, exp or espousing these things. He says that they are for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Why? So that the man of God or woman would be adequate, equipped for every good work. And so when we take these scriptures and we see what it says and you can't come back and formulate a biblical defense, your response cannot, should not be that it is a non-essential secondary issue. If that's the case, if all you know how to do is run to that, then you ought to be quiet. But the issue is, though, that if you're going to make this point and you can't defend it, then it calls into question that person's character, that person's mindset, that person's integrity, that person's intent. Because if you know, if you if you think that it's not essential, and by the way, it is. The reason why it's essential is because you're telling people who have the Holy Spirit in them or who may have the Holy Spirit in them, who think they do, that you can be a believer and still be bound, that you can have the spirit of the Lord in you, and at the same time, a demon, a demonic spirit, either in you, on you, demonizing you, whatever you, whatever terminology you want to use, if that's what you want to say, well then, what are you saying about the nature and the power of the Holy Spirit? We reject anything that causes someone to think that greater is whoever's outside of you than who is in you. We reject that. We reject anything that teaches that the Spirit of God is secondary in terms of power, that it is not as great as anything that comes against. We reject anything that says that the power of the Lord is not sufficient. We reject anything and anyone who will say that they are not free indeed if the Son has set them free. We reject anything that says that by the power of somebody else's hand. And oh, by the way, if you repent well enough, then you can be free indeed. There is no passage in the Bible that says a demon had to have been cast out of a person only if they completely and thoroughly repented. As a matter of fact, oftentimes, many cases, he didn't ask the person. And so if it's such a secondary issue, well, then why do you do it? If it's such a secondary, non-essential issue, well, then why do you defend it? If it's such a, such a secondary, non-essential issue, then why do you have conference after conference after conference, spend hours upon hours upon hours doing these things? Why then? I know why, because it to you, especially as far as you, it relates to your platform, it's not so secondary. But I have something that, that certainly we would all agree is not secondary. That's the gospel. How about we actually preach that if he sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And nothing is going to thwart that.